everybody, this is Phil Town. And this is Danielle Town. I'm, I'm here with Danielle Town. Oh, my. my delightful daughter. Um, <laughs> my delightful we, father. Uh, thank you very much. That's, ah, I love hearing that after, uh, <laughs> you know, being your dad all these years. You are but, delightful. I do find oh, you delightful. You're so sweet. Filled so with amazing. humor and zest for life. Absolutely. <laughs> still, still, still in my creeping old age, man. But uh, yeah, and I have a zest for this podcast. I'll tell you that. I've loved Me doing too. this with you. Me We're too. into the eighth year of this. And um, man, I'm alive. I've learned a lot from you about investing while I'm, you know, teaching you about investing. And I always look forward to a podcast to find out what in the world are you going to say this time about the whole thing. So, um, <laughs> well, you know, we were talking we were talking about analyzing businesses and trying to understand them, you know, and it's, and it's what yeah. it's what we do. I I have people I've hired to do that with me because, you know, it just requires a lot of work. And um, and the more you can cover, the more chance you have of finding something really, really good. And we were just talking about Warren Buffett at his meeting, basically saying, look, if if I had to start with a million dollars right now, mm -hmm. I would, and I wanted to make 50% a year, mm -hmm. I would go to the littlest companies, what we'd call micro caps. So mm -hmm. stuff below 300 million that's under the radar of uh, a professional analyst and professional hedge funds, and they're just too small these companies to make a dent in their returns, even if they doubled in the day, it wouldn't matter to be a rounding error in some of these big funds. So mm -hmm. that's a place where small investors can go and and hopefully find something that's really on sale. But you got to know what you're looking at, right? Yeah, we talked a bunch about that, right? Yeah. So how would you figure it out? How would you go about doing the work of a professional analyst and figuring out this company without making some terrible mistake? Well, it's an apropos question to what we were speaking about last time, which was research, how to find out about stuff that you like don't know that much about, how to do research into things that might be kind of obscure, and, um, and to determine if sources are legitimate or trustworthy or not. Um, and I think with, with those kinds of companies, penny stocks that don't have a lot of coverage or maybe any coverage by the industry and maybe are in like industries where they're so tiny that they're just not in the news or not in, you know, not in typical um, journalism, it's really hard to get outside views. And um, and right when we finished, I like wanted to make a point. I wrote it down, so I want to make sure I get to it. Uh, one thing that I know people, especially who are professionals, so this is probably priced out, priced over what an individual would spend. Maybe I mean everybody can decide, but an option is these expert networks, which uh, are literally a middleman network which connects hmm. an expert in a field to somebody hmm. who wants to know more about that field and typically not that other people don't want to know more but typically the people who are willing to pay a lot of money for that info are investors are funds who stand to make way 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 more money than their investment in the research so there are a couple and um do you like have you used any of these i know some investors do and some really don't like them just because they don't know who they're getting on the other end of the phone yeah that's um that's my biggest concern i and i don't want to i don't want to knock the um small business association or is that what it is sba um okay. out here in the u.s uh -huh. Um, but my experience with them many, many years ago was this. They have an experts group that are happy to advise you. These are people who retired from, from different fields, and you can call them up and, and uh, ask their opinion about things. And they're, they're basically retired people who, you know, like docents sort of at a museum. They're just doing it for fun. Like for free? Yeah. Oh. 
Well, that's so the a cool SBA resource. Has, has that very cool wow. resource for free. Yep. yep. Amazing tip. Yeah, I didn't I mean, know that. They'll totally talk to you, and then if you like them, what they're doing, and you want to hire them for a period of time or something, they can. They'll sign on with you for some consulting fee. Wow. Um, but they'll definitely demo for you. Absolutely, their skill and knowledge about the business, and you can have a good mm -hmm. demonstration. The only problem I found is that I didn't feel like I was in touch with anybody that really knew a lot. Hmm. Yeah, I mean, that, for free, you're going to get who you get. You get who you get. And so we never really used it much. And, and this is yeah. going all the way back to the early days when I was really scratching around for how, to, how do I do this. Absolutely, yeah. I, I thought, oh, well, this would be a great resource. And it just, I just never, you know, it could be that I just didn't, have good luck for the like literally the three times I tried it and then just went mm -hmm. all right I'm done I'm done with that and number one number two <laughs> that was literally 40 years ago mm -hmm. so I have a suspicion things have improved substantially maybe uh, because now you have all of a, a much easier way to communicate with people yeah, that's true. You might have people that are willing to put some time in, but are much better experts, and they wouldn't do it back in the day when you had to get on a telephone, which is what happened. Mm, maybe. So now it's a lot of this is still, you know, the telephone or whatever. I imagine yeah. you can do video if you want, but it's yeah. I, th I think it's exactly that, but paid, so they are able to get really high quality people. A major one, and also a major one just for research resources, is Tegus or Tegus, T E G U S, and they uh, they're pretty well known. That's kind of a standard in the industry. Um, and then another one is Knowledge Ridge, Expert Calls. Um, right. And I, they run something like starting around maybe $500 an hour, and then they go up to like a few thousand dollars an hour. And a lot of funds will skip all that and just do a annual fee. Like you just buy it and you become a member, and then you can just talk to people whenever you want, and not, not keep track, depending on if that's like something that they find useful. Uh -huh. So it's quite interesting. And I would also add that for people listening, because I know we have people in all different industries, being an expert can be a really nice little side gig, which takes not a lot of effort. You do it from home for an hour, you know, and make huh. a decent hourly little chunk there and maybe get to talk to somebody interesting. So that's another side of it. It's something I've thought about with legal stuff, but I uh, have never quite gotten around to interesting okay well i wonder how i wonder how what the quality is that you end up with oh, that's i mean it depends entirely on the network and and obviously these like the highest level ones have very good i mean they have like you know professors at harvard on the list and they have oh. like world-class scientists well and, wait a second i i'm pretty sure none of those people are going to talk to your average ordinary I'm, I'm investing ten thousand dollars. You know, I want to talk to a Harvard professor. They'll talk to whoever gets on the network and pays the network middleman to get them on the phone. Well, okay. They don't so care who much? they're talking to. How much? Well, this is just from the website. I mean, go and talk to them yourself. From the websites, it said something like starting around five hundred dollars an hour and up from there. So obviously, if you're going to try to talk to I don't know, world-class biotech expert so-and-so, that might cost you $5,000 an hour, I don't know, or maybe they're not accessible. They only, maybe they will only talk to the major head funds. I don't know the details. I've never used one of these things. But, because for me, I just don't think it's worth the money. But for somebody who's investing more money than I am, I, I can see how it would be worth it. And I know personally from talking to other investor friends, they use it and they really like it. And what okay. several of them have said to me is that it's not even so much the exact information they get, because again, like it's a stranger and they have their own perspective and their own experience and somebody else might have a slightly different one. 
but the way that, this is from friends, the way that they have used it successfully is that in a field where they don't know that much, mm -hmm. they'll call up one of these experts and just get like a basic lay of the land. What's important? What kind of terminology do you guys use? What do you know about like the general competition? You know, tell me about like the basics of this scientific process. You know, do you know of any like weird patents that are about to show up? Just kind of like lay of the land, here's the area. And then from there, they've, they've found that then they go do their own research and, and figure stuff out. But it, it sort of is like a really great, easy, quick primer into a certain industry is, is how I've heard it being used. Interesting. Is it, yeah, I just think anything that costs $500 an hour out the door is gonna be really hard for me to pay and I've got the money. No way, people, like people, funds pay, what is it, $40,000 a year for a Bloomberg terminal? And they get multiple of them? I don't think 500 bucks an hour is breaking the bank. And by the way, Bloomberg has their own expert network that you can get as part of your subscription. Yeah, we're, so, we have Bloomberg subscription, we're tapped into that, and it's, it's good as far as it goes. I, I think oh, we got to start with stuff that's free. I'm, so I'm going to push back on this a little bit and say, OK, we got these experts out there. Very important. But before I want to spend five hundred dollars an hour with somebody who's going to tell me stuff that I don't even know if it's true. Right. Well, in, yeah, in other words, but I mean, I mean me the whole Harvard point is that you're <laughs> getting somebody who's at least like credible in their field. Right. Right. They're credible in their field. But in my world, I would say most of the professors that are in the Ivy League, particularly at Harvard, don't have a clue. Okay, so great. That's, well, then well, don't talk to that person. That. <laughs> I mean, well, I just don't want to spend want. money on them. I don't want to spend money on them to find out. And I think that's the difficulty. I think that's the, going to be the hurdle that most of our listeners would face is, all right, you're going to get some professor. You know, you're going to get, okay, you get the, how do you say this, Demodoran? Demoradin. The Moradin at NYU. You mean the guy like at NYU the, who wrote the book? Right, he wrote the book on valuation. The expert, he's the guy, if you brought him into court, the court would believe him, mm -hmm. right? And he, he might not be able to help me at all in the way I look at a company. That's Yeah, then I, mean, I would say, you know, jump, on the, jump off the phone after 15 minutes and cut your losses. But you don't know that. You don't know he's not telling... But I, I wouldn't me. use you it. I, would, he... I wouldn't use them for investing advice. I think that would be silly. It's okay. Let's take an example then. A hard, a, a real good example. Let's say I want to know more about an envelope company that is, you know, based out of Canada and they're buying small U.S. companies. And they they're... won't do that. It's not like here's at least I don't know. Maybe they would. It seems unlikely. Here's X company. Tell me about it. Well, no, I'm, what, what I know, what, I don't care about them telling me about X company. I want to know about the industry. Right. Yeah, yeah. You could get somebody from the envelope industry. Yeah. Yeah. Could I? I'm sure. Yeah. Okay. Well, I might be trying to do that and see and report back. I'm also, uh, this, is, this is going to be the next thing we do here on the, on the podcast. This is going to be oh, quite yeah? fun, I think. What are we going to yeah. do? We are going to explore the experts industry. And far as utilization for a small investor for something totally affordable and totally useful, right? So we want to see utility here. <clears throat> so we're going to explore this, you and me. What does totally affordable mean? It might mean free. So okay. I'm going to, here's what I'm going to do. You, here's what I, I challenge. I am going to explore the uh, part of the Small Business Administration, <clears throat> which is dedicated to helping people with their small business. Mm -hmm. And that, that organization is called SCORE, S-C-O-R-E. Oh, cool. If you want to go look it up, you guys. Okay. And they have like 250 SCORE offices around the United States. Mm -hmm. And they are free. Mm -hmm. And they have all these experts who are 
who are self-proclaimed experts. I don't know that the SBA does any vetting at all. I don't know why they would or how hmm. they would. SCORE <clears throat> Business Mentoring on their website. Yep. Very yep. cool. SCORE Business Mentoring. And um, it's no cost. It doesn't matter how many times you visit the SCORE Mentor or how many SCORE Mentors you work with, no charge. Mm -hmm. So, you know, um, and I think the way they vet people is that if you don't really have a good experience with whoever your mentor is, then you tell the SBA and that person gets dinged enough they won't use them as a mentor anymore. At least I hope they wouldn't, but I don't know that for sure. I do know they have sort of like, if you don't like what this guy's doing, let us know, you know? Sure. So maybe they vet them like that over time. Um, I would imagine that <clears> if it's <throat> volunteer, there's minimal vetting because Probably so. you don't want to send I, away people who are trying to help, you know? Right. And you can always, in this program, you can ask your mentor to point you to other SCORE mentors that might help you more. Mm -hmm. So this is, the program has improved itself since we tapped into it 40 years ago. And I think this is a great place to start. And I'm going to start very there. Very cool. Gonna, I am going to go find a mentor who will mentor me um, about uh, the envelope business. Or I might find a couple others, you know, that I might be interested in that mm -hmm. would be fun to hear from. Hear how I think it might be good for you guys to hear how hard it is or how easy it is to actually get access to somebody who actually understands this business I'm trying to figure out. Okay. That'd be great. So I'm I will confused take about what this like. So okay, yeah, somebody who's free might be. It might take a while to find great information. Right, um, and I'm going to look at the other resources they've got. They have live webinars. They have recorded webinars. They have interactive courses. I suppose if you want to learn how to be a better marketer or something. Um, they've got local workshops, again, probably oriented toward hands-on running a business. Um, and they've got a library of online resources, which might be really Amazing. useful. Amazing. I had never seen this. This is incredible. This is such a good resource. Absolutely. Yeah. So um, I would go to SCORE as a start and just find that library thing. Um, what's it called? It's really cool library let's see what's called resources for your business success and it's got all kinds of filters for what kind of thing you're looking for including a podcast which could be really good we um, should sign up <laughs> i know we should sign up to run a podcast right on we will mentor you <laughs> Here we go. On business. how to do oh, your here, podcast at, from your house. Okay, this could be really actually pretty damn useful now. Way better than a long time ago. I'm just looking down the list of possible things I could download to listen to. Here's mm -hmm. somebody that's the founder of a real successful South Carolina dim sum restaurant who's going to share her journey of building a successful restaurant. Cool. So if I'm looking at, I want to buy a restaurant man what a, that would have to be a really useful absolutely really, really useful thing to, to Very listen cool to. that you knew about this yeah i'd totally forgotten about it until we started into this area and then i realized oh man i used this yeah. so long ago right pre-internet like when you're just desperate right yeah absolutely um gosh in fact they even have okay this would be really useful for all of y'all i hope i'm going to take a look at this it's called Understanding Financial Statements, the Balance Sheet Income Statement and Cash Flow Statement. Discover the Essential Financial Statements for Small Business Success. And learn what uh, you know entrepreneurs have to know, basically. Um, hmm. So what's a financial statement? And I mean, if you're in if you're doing what we do, you gotta know these things. This this is just hands-on the the language of business so here's a great way to to kind of dive into it and by the way on that i don't even know how i wandered onto this but i'm going to wander onto this i'm finding this book very very interesting can you see this yes financial intelligence yes who's it by it is by karen berman and joe knight 
Um, and it's a manager's guide to knowing what the numbers really mean. And it's written for Ooh. entrepreneurs. Ooh. <laughs> but it's kind of like, um, it's a Harvard Business Review Press, so they've got some credibility with me. <clears throat> it's been around, <clears throat> sorry, it's been around long enough to get revised a couple of times. Um, and the first edition got this kind of blurbs. It's like the elements of style, mm. like for writing, for yeah. finance. Wow. One of the clearest guides I know of. Um, it's safe to say most people don't know what they're talking about on any given subject. That goes double for finance. How, Give them like, a copy of this. So we, we uh, probably six months ago or something, talked about me reading a book that I can't even remember the name of, and it was just way too dense and way too hard, and I couldn't, I couldn't do it, so we never did it. But is this one, like, how is it written? Is it really dense? Um, Could it's, somebody it's, with brain challenges absorb it? <laughs> Yeah, I mean, I, <clears throat> it goes into a lot in the initial part of the book about why you should do this, you know. Um, and then it starts into, the next section is the peculiarities of the income statement. Hmm. And, um, I mean, here's the first chapter of that. It's profits and estimate, right? Most people think it's a real number. So then it goes to the balance sheet, you know, what is goodwill? I mean, you know, so it pretty much like deep. walks you through. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. And then you look at what companies can, what accountants choose, uh, how they choose to allocate capital onto these three financial statements. Or, so, you know, when a company buys a, a truck, do they put it on as an expense? Do they put it on as a capital expenditure? Hmm. And what does that do ultimately to the cash flow statement and to the income statement? And what does that tell you? about how much money they're actually making when they say they're, they have income of so-and-so or earnings of such and such per share, what has the accountant done to tweak that number? Because they can definitely tweak it. So I would say this is down in the weeds pretty good. Um, if you want to get down in the weeds, this would be a good book to get down in the weeds with. It sounds really useful for somebody like me who didn't go through business <clears throat> school or through a finance degree and who like I mean like I I know the stuff you know because we've you've taught it to me and we've learned it to uh, like with my, with our listeners I've learned it but to have another deeper perspective on how those numbers get created does sound really useful yeah and how they can be manipulated that's that's and I how they can the be exactly. exactly how they can be does manipulated. it does it talk about capital allocation and like choices and strategy at all or is it pure uh you know statements here's how accounting works that's a really good question let's take a look here hmm. so you haven't finished it yet no uh -uh. Okay. capital expenditures source and uses <clears throat> capital budgeting um let's see if they talk about allocation oh yeah here we go allocations of capital oh okay down there so that's cool okay i'm gonna buy it i think you should buy and it. i will attempt to read it yeah so, i think it's gonna take a minute listeners yeah i think it's unlikely but listeners if you like the sound of this book go get it maybe we'll talk about it a bit more on the podcast yeah maybe we'll find out it's not really that useful when we get deep into it i've only read about a quarter of it but i'm i'm happy with it so far i think it's legit hmm. when, what i'm reading so far and I, you know, one of the things that we've harped at here is how important it is to look at cash flow, mm. you know, because earnings can be manipulated so easily by mm -hmm. these kinds of things. Mm -hmm. And it, it's nice to see, it's nice to know that they're doing it. I think that would be the. That the they're key doing thing. what? Manipulating their earnings. Numbers. Oh, yes. Oh, yes. <clears throat> <laughs> Wouldn't that be good? Yes. I, yes. Please, I would and like it's to. It's like know for that. years, Netflix was producing a fabulous income without having any cash. Mm -hmm. <laughs> right? Mm -hmm. Right. But it's because of the way that they were allocating capital and choosing to write it off mm -hmm. or not, right? Or amortize it. So, yeah, it's, it's nice if you can get into the basics of this stuff. I think it's worth, worth playing around with. All right. So, I didn't mean to take us afield from launching into. Uh, what we're going to do next week. And the next week, 
I am going to look seriously at SCORE. I'm going to call them here in Atlanta. I'm going to try to go up and meet with some SCORE people. I'm going to see if I can find if there's anybody around anywhere in the country <clears throat> who will advise me on an envelope business. I and love I'll report it. back on that. Okay, but wait. I think we, and <clears throat> I want to test out one of these expert networks because now I'm intrigued. Having never really given them much thought, now I'm intrigued. But we need to choose a topic or industry that's actually useful, like a real investing thing, because I don't know if there's any public envelope companies that we could go buy. I think it's probably more like a paper company or an no, office supplies company. No, there's a public company. entrepreneur company we could buy. A public a envelope. Public envelope. <clears throat> All they envelope. make is envelopes. Yeah, pretty much. They they disdain <clears throat> the paper. It is gummed items or nothing. <laughs> it's <laughs> and they they want to if be If it's not in folded, a, it's not us. <laughs> that's pretty true. They have also <laughs> they've they've spent some they've done some capital allocation to improve their packaging business, which is also folded, if you will. Um, so I'm not entirely <laughs> sure what what's involved with packaging. <laughs> But I think this could be quite fun. They are public, and I'm going to keep them very quiet who they are. You're, I was just going to say, know. are you going to tell us? Or like, just, I'm not even going to tell you what you country know. they're in. I'll give you a clue. Ooh. They are not in the United States. Okay. If it truly exists, then I'm in. It Envelope might not exist. company. I might be making this up. It has to exist, to or else this is just a research. waste of time. But what I I'm saying is exist. we can choose a different kind of subject. You chose envelopes out of the clear air. Let's pick a subject that actually you would go to an expert on, which is probably not envelopes. It's probably it is something envelopes. techy no, or it's sciencey. It's, um, it's not. You, you're not. No, you're not. People. People. No, they're not. This is why I'm picking envelope companies. Because if it's techy and sciencey, and you don't know enough and you need to go talk to an expert, you probably shouldn't be anywhere near it. That is not, techie and sciencey stuff is not simple. Ask yeah, me how absolutely. I know. I, yeah, I mean, the I longest running company that I, I invested in, the longest hold that I've had of a stock, um, was a bioscience company um, that made a made ver variations of organic materials for farmers and i mean let me tell you it, it is complex you got to really understand the farming industry right you got to understand where this techie stuff is going mm -hmm. who's buying it mm -hmm. why it can't be just eclipsed by somebody else's techie stuff right you know right all of that Hence, i would you just pay a lot rather of money to talk to some experts right no let's, like let's that do envelopes but I'm just describing that is why these in, this industry of experts oh, it is why exists. They exist, for yeah, sure. yeah, you're right. You're right about that. It doesn't That's make it a good exist. use, but that is why they exist. Right on. So I'm going to be browsing mentor profiles at Score, and I'm no, going to encourage you guys to do the, the same thing. Is there an envelope company? Yes. Scouts Honor. Scouts Honor. How do you do Scouts okay. Honor? I don't know. Were you ever a I scout? I forgot. <laughs> Only briefly, I have to confess that I set a fire in the school gym. Of course you did. <laughs> it just seemed like a good idea at the time. They had us building these fires that you can't light. And in everybody the gym, was doing it inside. In the gym, yes. Like you can't light it, obviously it's in the gym. But what is the point of that to an What was the old? exercise? Was it making a little twig uh, yeah, tent, like a the teepee? Little teepee? Yeah, the little teepee, yeah, and then stack. That sounds I so to see, dumb. I wanted to see if my Why would fire you ever would do work. That? Yeah, because I wanted to see if it would work. If you can't light it, then you don't know if you did a good job. Absolutely my thought at eight years old. I mean, you are correct. I would have started a fire with you. Thank you. They didn't appreciate it at all. And, uh, oh no, that was when I was a little older. I was trying to get into Boy Scouts and that was the end of that. And um, that I was like out of Cub how Scouts. You, you got in, you have to do a fire 
twig no, building test? No, I was just one of you know, you to step to... into the Boy Scouts and they're doing whatever they're doing. And okay, 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 okay. No, I got booted out of, out of Cub Scouts as well because um, I think I refused. I did something wrong when it came to creating a shoe polish shoe box. Oh, I, I remember. remember You've said this to me before. I remember this. Yeah. The weird, because so what a weird thing away. to say. Shoe polish away. shoe box. Yeah. It's a shoe, like you make a box and it's got shoe polish. And you put on shoe it. polish in it. Yeah. I think awesome. we were doing that as Cub Scouts. And I don't know what I did, but I had the impression that I was not being appreciated. <laughs> <laughs> I was eight years old. So when they weren't looking, the Cub Scout lady, I snuck out and started heading home. And I knew enough that any car coming down the road at night would be somebody looking for me, chances are. So I would dive into the woods every time a car would come by. <laughs> I want to tell you, nothing will freak out a Cub Scout woman like missing a child. Yes. They went bananas. Oh the my gosh. Home, a worst nightmare alert. situation. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. My 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 parents were furious at, at not so much at me, although they should have been. They were furious at her that I, I escaped. But you yeah. know, I really oh I really goodness. was a, that was really mean of me. I mean I absolutely knew that she was gonna be in trouble. Oh man. <laughs> kids well, are not... kids are wicked, man. They could they could do wicked stuff. You think they can't? And they're only eight years old, and they can. They can they can be they can be very, very clever at really being nasty. Of course, so, I don't know. I yeah. never thought kids couldn't. I was yeah, just you're very telling my that. friend how I used to play dead so that my sister would think that I was dead, and she believed <laughs> me every single time and would start to cry to the because she thought I was dead and then I would just get up and she'd be like okay oh, Lou, what a relief no. I did that multiple times like she fell for no. it multiple times and you don't know that that happened which means that we did it like when parents weren't around and she never told you oh my gosh yep. that's just for fun like there was no reason for it except it was fun for me Oh, <laughs> damn. Oh, man. I Maybe don't know what I'm I would have done. Maybe I'm a psychopath. I don't know. Yeah, you little kids. <laughs> They're wicked, man. Totally wicked. Um, All okay. right. Envelope so, research. That's what uh, we're going to do the next why week. Why we're doing and, this is, is yeah, I, I want something more interesting, but I'll, I'll go with it. Envelopes. Okay. Well, okay. Pick another one. You no, go I mean, your I, way. I'll go my way. I don't have a particular, like company to lean towards so i think the fact that you have a particular company that you're interested in and therefore this is actual useful knowledge i think that's more important than something okay. random well i'll tell you what apart <clears throat> from the public facing part of our uh conversation here i may tell you the name of the company if you'd like to know yes i want to know the name of the and company and then you could you could start digging in with something tangible yes please Okay. Okay. Later. Um, cool. All right. And um, I feel like we, okay, I'm trying to remember if I had any other notes about what to talk about, but I think we went through it. The expert thing was what I wanted to mention. And um, we can talk a little more at some point about like opinions of friends, because I think that's another layer of knowledge gathering. I agree that may or may not be useful and may even be counterproductive possibly or totally incredible agree everything you're saying <laughs> yeah yep okay, okay. cool we'll talk about that envelopes great time to go play see you thanks all. everybody bye bye Hi guys, thanks for listening to Invested. If you enjoyed this episode and you want more information or to listen to additional episodes, visit our website at investedpodcast.com and sign up for my virtual workshop right there. Spots are definitely limited for this event. I'm not kidding, they really are. They sell out. 
very quickly. So everything discussed on this podcast, by the way, is either my opinion or it's Danielle's opinion. And it's really important. It's not to be taken as investing advice because I am not your financial advisor, nor have I considered your personal situation as your fiduciary. So remember that. You're on your own here. This podcast is for your entertainment and education only, and I really hope you enjoyed it.